Hey guys, what's going on? Hello, hello. Welcome to another video in Seattle. So you guys had, uh, a lot of you guys actually had asked me um, what I thought of the binding post jumper upgrade from my unboxing video. So I thought I would uh, give you guys a little overview of what I've heard and seen out of these guys um, and answer the question, do high-end binding post jumpers make a difference? So I will tell you guys how I go about assessing changes in my audio system because I really don't want to hear that, oh, it's placebo, it's snake oil. Um, you just, because you spent money, you're going to sit here and, and listen intently at the music and, and, and see it, you know, uh, uh, find out if you can hear a difference and you're going to claim you do all, all the crap. Again, most of the people that get on forums and talk about, uh, speaker cables have not made the investment themselves, uh, usually jealous because they can't afford the things. And I'm not saying that, um, by any means that I'm rich or that, uh, you know, I have something better than someone else. I started with garage sale receivers and, and uh, Radio Shack. I mean, I'm 50 years old now. It took me years and years of, of experience and, and working retail showrooms and, and, and uh, you know, being around the equipment and testing different products out to make the assessments I do to decide what's in my house uh, now. So, um, but a lot of guys don't want to take that time and put those years of experience in. They just want to talk smack. So, uh, you know, I do have a pretty, pretty resolving system at this point in my life. And I have had a lot of experience with different products and uh, different cables. So I've learned to uh, realize that speaker cables do make a difference. And not always for the better, guys. I had a set of, um, I'm not going to name the brand, but I had a, 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 a very well-known brand of speaker cable interconnects that were $230. And I hooked up a pair of other speaker interconnects that were $118. And they blew the other ones away. And uh, looking at the science behind the product, I could see why the way that the, uh, you know, cable was made and the copper and the architecture of the cable and the way that the copper was wound, it really made a difference, an audible difference. And that really educated me that there is a sound difference, not always for the better. Another hundred dollars for a cable that didn't sound as good. So I never said and never will say that just because something is more expensive means it's better um, in a certain system, it could be and others, it wouldn't be. It depends on the amp and the speakers and everything else that goes into the making of that cable working with that product. So that disclaimer aside, um, what I, what I do guys to, um, hear a difference anytime I bring something into my house is to, uh, get on the phone. <laughs> I get on the phone. I sit here right where I'm sitting now with you guys in this viewpoint vantage point and, and I uh, get on my phone and I distract myself on purpose. Okay. Um, what I do is I start looking at articles on audio or I'll look at some YouTube stuff or what, whatever I'm doing um, to distract myself from the system. The reason I do this is have you guys ever driven a car that you've had for years and years and you're sitting at a light, suddenly you feel a hesitation in the motor and you know, uh Oh, that's not supposed to be there. And you take it in and find out you have a bad oxygen sensor or maybe a faulty spark plug, whatever it is, you know, that car like the back of your hand. Well, for music lovers in our systems, as you guys know, who have invested into your systems, we hear a CD that we've been playing since we've been 15 or a vinyl that we've been hearing since we've been 15 or the guys who stream, you hear a song that you've known forever. Um, I have CDs that went with me from, from junior high into uh, the army and into my regular many apartments I've lived in and houses and, you know, through the years. And I've heard that CD in every kind of surrounding I could possibly get it in. So uh, I'm very familiar with that piece. Well, as I'm sitting here reading, if I hear anything that pulls me out of that distraction, right? Uh, whoa, what the hell is that? I never heard that before. Why, that never sounded that good. You know, it, it makes me take notice. That's when I say, ah, it's done something different in my system, okay? So I'm not sitting here analyzing, looking for something different, trying to find out was that investment worth it. I ignore it. And I distract myself. And if something pulls my attention away, that's a good thing, then I am very happy. And I realize I made a good investment and there was a change. So yes, guys, um, there was a change going from these to the select. Now, what I wasn't able to do is basically, let me explain this is 
I the speaker cables before this before these, if you guys remember, they weren't the select. They were the bifocal X. They were bi-wireable. And it was really hard for me psychologically more than anything to switch from a bi-wired cable the way that these speakers were designed to take and make it a single run. But the Select series did not come in a bi-wire option. It still does not. It's only single run. And I thought, well, shoot, you know, and I asked Kimber, hey guys, am I downgrading by going, uh, you know, with jumpers and a single run instead of bi-wire? And they said, Paul, no, the, the, the Select is so, so much better sounding over the bifocal. You're, you're going to really be happy with the change. And so um, I, I got the cables in the house for a listening session. I could return them if I didn't like them. Um, and uh, I, I was sh pleasantly surprised. If anything, I was shocked. Much more um, accuracy in tones and, and details and textures. It's just an all around better cable. Um, but I did not have a lower, cheaper cable to start with, jumper wise, before I put these in. So there's nothing I can AB on a cheap pair of wire going into here. But that's okay, because what I did is I went from a $325 set of, uh, of carbon jumpers to an $1,100 pair of select jumpers. So, you know, I like that even better, because does it, what, you know, oh, sure, something cheap with these, anybody can hear a difference in that, but what about when you go from a really good quality pair of jumpers to something like that? Now, that's overkill, right? That's what people would say. So I'm really glad I got to to test that theory because absolutely there was an upgrade. And uh, probably three, four times during an hour listening uh, did I go, holy, and like really broke concentration from what I was doing on the phone to notice the change. And here's what the change is, okay? Nothing fancy. It didn't make the soundstage bigger and, and wider. It didn't make the bass better and the high sweeter. But what the one thing I noticed that was immediate um, was focus, okay? Just focus, like that that uh, binocular that was just off a little bit and you could still see, but as soon as you just dialed it in a bit, everything snaps into clarity. And what that did is it made that inner detail um, come out. And that's why I would go, what, what was that? Or how did I hear that? Because with that extra focus, it brought out those minute details. And, and that's how it has to be, right? If you've known that music forever and you're already playing it through high quality cables and speakers, it's hard to really hear something different in that recording because you're so familiar with it. But by adjusting that focus, it let me see deeper into that, into the details of that song. And that's what was distracting me, you know, that, that bell that rang out a little bit clearer or the thump on the, uh, piano as the, as he was hitting the piano key, uh, 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 the, the piano pedal underneath the piano. You could hear that stuff, the thump. Everything was just, was just clearer. Okay. So that's what I, got out of this upgrade. Do binding post jumpers make a difference? High quality ones, absolutely. Um, and I'm glad that I looked at this in an objective manner and didn't try to search for something to validate my purchase. I wanted to just ignore it, go about my day in here. And then when something drew my attention, it, it would pull me out of whatever I was doing and make me go, wow, that was new. Or that, uh, that sounded so much more real. Um, and that's what these did for me. So yeah, guys. And, and, and the only thing I can think of is, come on, you know, as good as this is, look at the gauge on this and it's a different material. It's, it's, it's a different, you know, the carbon is a different structure than the select. So when you're taking the actual select wire from the cable and you're matching it with the jumper all the way through, well, there's consistency. There's no break in lower gauge or anything like that. There's just more consistency going into here. Now, a whole nother debate is, well, how come, <laughs> how come all this high-end cable's here, but then there's a wire going from here to the, to, the, to the speaker? How can that make a difference? I have no idea, guys, but many of you who uh, have invested in cables and whatnot, come on, you can absolutely hear a difference. Now, let me qualify this. Just because something costs more expensive does not mean it's better. And again, I've had uh, cheaper cables, uh, beat more expensive cables, a $230 pair of interconnects that I had, and I got a different brand and put them in that were $118. And it was night and day. I was playing a piano piece, which I played piano growing up and I was playing a piano piece and uh cheaper cable, hundred dollars less sounded better. 
So yes, is there hype? Is there some marketing behind some products? Absolutely. I never said that um, you should uh, spend more money just because you have it on a cable. Audition it, try it out. Um, you know, read the reviews, look at the technical aspects and the science behind the cable before you get it. But um, and more expensive doesn't always mean better because it's a synergy between your speakers and your components and your line conditioning and, and everything else that you have in your system. One, one pair of cables could sound better with a different amp or different pair of speakers. One's warmer, one's more clinical. We all know this. I'm, I'm, shot, I'm spitting out terms you guys are already very familiar with. So um, that is the overview that I give you on these binding posts jumpers. $325 to 1100 was it worth it? Absolutely. The inner detail, clarity, and the things I'm hearing definitely was a difference for the better. So my next uh, video I will put up is on my uh, all digital select coax cable uh, with the all silver um, uh, WBTs. You guys have been asking me what that sounds like. I'm going to reference that against my D60 Illuminations, which is a, you know, five out of five star review digital cable um, and tell you what the difference was between those. So I really enjoyed making this, guys. Uh, sometimes I just want to throw out content to you because I want to keep in touch. Uh, I want to let you guys know what I'm hearing in my system. It's not fair just to unbox something and then not give you guys, uh, you know, a viewpoint on what I've heard or what I thought about making that investment. And something sounds like poo-poo. Something doesn't work. I don't care how much I love the company. It's going to go back um, or I'm going to sell it on eBay and get something else. So uh, everything that's in my system is past my scrutiny and I'm very happy. All right. So I will catch you guys on the next video. And uh, till then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.